within the world, within society, within the frame of time, the eight hours or nine hours that the sun is up until we right. let the next seven or eight hours until the sun comes back up, are we mentally preparing ourselves for the day? Have we just centered ourselves? Mm -hmm. So number one, for a woman, a black woman, you have to believe in something higher than yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily say that the black man is higher or lower. If you are attacking mm -hmm. with 100% and it's not being reciprocated, you can feel it, they can see it, We, are, it's evident. Mm -hmm. So you got to know yourself on a basic level. I'm a little closer. I won't bite, I promise. I just want to be. I feel like a kid right now. That's good. You feel yeah. like a brother and sister moment. I know, you introduced me to this park. Do you remember? No. Uh, probably not. Like a long time ago, like long, like six years ago. It was about six, I, I remember the other park. Um. Actually, I do kind of, but I remember, I definitely, I definitely remember the walks. You remember within, the walks? Within this park. Yeah. I can honestly say that. This is my stuff. Are you ready? I'm going to switch I'm, gears. I'm born, born ready. <laughs> I got to make sure we're good. <laughs> I got to switch gears, buddy. You're making me think that I'm just a little bit more attractive than I presume to be. up. <laughs> I know, right? Ew. Uh, okay, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let me do my things. Are we ready? Let me switch gears. It's T Speaks. <sighs> Thank you. Give me a camera. Why not me to start, you know, and break the ice? Let's get the ice broken. Okay. Stop! All right, peace, peace, peace. It's your girl, T Speaks. I'm back with another episode of Understanding the Black Experience. My life's mission is to help heal the black community one interview at a time. I have my bestie for life, my soul brother, soul everything, Brother Cameron. Is it okay if I say your last name? Williams. Yeah. Cameron. Cameron William. William. Cameron Kelly William. William. William Kelly. Which one is it? <laughs> It'd be like that sometimes. <laughs> You're my childhood best friend. Really? How about that? We've known each other since I was like 14 in Vallejo. So we're going on, I guess we're saying our age slightly. Yeah. 20 years? Yeah. Or less? Yeah. 20 years or more? Mm hmm. 20 years or more? So thank you for being a guest on the show. Thank you for having me. This is a, a beautiful moment in time for all of you guys watching. A lot of things are happening. And for this, mm -hmm. it's really necessary. So I want to thank T Speaks for not only myself being here, but every other interviewer that she's had on the show and everyone else she will interview um you know give thanks and yeah. uh you know black first yeah let's do start there oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about you your background where you're from your hobbies anything that you want to let the viewers know um okay uh <clears throat> like she was speaking on uh grew up in vallejo um but i was born in berkeley and I mm -hmm. say that as a, a strong start point because on this planet, we have portals and sources where people come in 
and uh, for Berkeley to be a place where I, you know, came in to this experience this go around, uh, <clears throat> it really spoke to the fact that uh, a pure hippie uh, walking in a black man's body was, was the epitome of me. So, uh, growing up in Vallejo, North Vallejo at that, um, grew up around the likes of Mac Dre's and the, mm -hmm. and the E-40s and, and yeah. getting that type of influence, that type of uh, knowledge, obviously game, but uh, just something that, and actually in the words of Nipsey, you know, not having a father in the household, you could actually listen to those dudes grow up and be a decent individual. After that, I went to college in Houston, Texas, Texas Southern University. Go Tigers. Uh, I studied business management there. After my first year, I decided to just start my own business. Uh, and I can just bump my head along the way. Uh, ended up being a background dancer and I went on tour with uh, Baby Bash. Met a lot of beautiful people there. You were in a couple uh, videos, Cyclone, right? Uh, yeah, but Baby I'm Back was the biggest Baby one I'm though. Back. Okay. Uh, with Akon. Mm -hmm. And every time I see Akon in life, he looks at me like, I, I know him. I don't know <laughs> where from, but I, I, I remember you. Yeah. You know, um, after the tour life, after the schooling, I went and had to piece back together my life. My father was in uh, Johnstown, Pennsylvania, and uh, I got a moment in time to go and talk to him and, you know, kind of right some wrongs and, mm -hmm. and, and understand a little bit more about my physiology and my anatomy through him. Mm -hmm. And karmic patterns, you know, we have a lot of uh, karmic imprints from our parents it would behoove a person or uh, for a person to take heed to mm -hmm. understanding those things that you know your parents might have gifted you with or the lack thereof. Um, Give us some examples. Let's talk about uh, that. Like, what do we get from our parents? Let's, let's, I mean, you know, we know anatomy, we know yeah. genetics, we get. Uh, you know, on a very basic level, we get eye color and, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the simple things. Uh, on a spiritual level, though, if you were a fan of cats, mm -hmm. if, if, if it was your first time ever seeing a cat and you were indifferent, you had no feeling toward that cat. When your mom or dad comes out and they say either, come here, kitty and or scat cat you have a imprint that's already embedded within you so you either love or hate cats kind of initially from there it might not always sustain itself but there's a karmic pattern that has to do with your parent mm -hmm. you and her your affiliation with cats or anything what about like mental health stuff like definitely well that's on a much uh Larger scale. Um, <clears throat> a lot of things that we would consider or deem mental mental health issues, mm -hmm. a lot of times could just be from your diet hmm. and what you're consuming, what you are. Uh, they say that about uh, ADHD and they say that about ADD children. You switch their diet up. Mm -hmm. You get them on a, a different type of diet. Uh, and we all learn at different levels and at different rates and at different paces. So one frequency might not mm -hmm. mesh the same with someone else's. Yes, inherently we do take on addictions from our parents. My dad had a beautiful yeah. drinking habit. And I, I don't have a drinking habit. Mm -hmm. However, if I get too down on myself 
that bottle does start looking a little bit more appeasing. Yeah. And I can convince myself into believing that might be something that I might want to do. And it's always active. The same is going on with our chakra centers. They're always emanating each direction. So if you are blocked in your energy source, let's say speech, if you can't communicate well, it will come out. It will show up. And not in one way, but in several different ways. It manifests itself because it's a block. It has to be open. I've noticed just growing up being a black man for 35 years is uh, there's a, a certain conditioning and there's a certain rhetoric that I think that black men have kind of accustomed themselves to and it's to believe less than for themselves. Mm -hmm. One thing I've learned, I guess, on the journey is that faith does come by hearing and hearing and hearing. And if I'm in a society that every time I turn around, I am scrutinized, I am taken advantage of, I am looked at as beneath, when secretly uh, there's still the undertone of I know what that black man is capable of. So I can't ever put him in my establishments and give him something that I've worked or stole so effortlessly for, you know. Us moving forward, black people as a whole have to say, let's look at who the true enemy is. Let's, wait, first let's identify what, what, where, where this hate and this anger that come, that is, that's already kind of embedded through an ancestral DNA. Uh, do we talk about slavery? Do we talk about the redlining? Do we talk about Jim Crow? Do we talk about it all? Do we talk about castration? Do we talk about some of the most diabolical things you can kind of think of these people did? And we were supposed to kind of somehow be okay uh, and get by. That can't be reality. And uh, we understand that there's probably something much deeper going on on the core level. There aren't too many sectors within our society that speak to a black community that has that I can bounce my money eight times ten times and that makes sense that when it finally goes out we we've built more and more and and have have had more to kind of work with resources really intense question So tell me, tell me something you want the sisters to know about the black man. One thing that I need to stress to the black woman mm -hmm. in, the, in the words again of Nipsey, the marathon continues. This isn't, it's not a sprint. It's not a regular race, it's, a, it's really a marathon. As confused as we are, both men and women, black men and women. Um, somewhere, black women cannot miss the basics. I want you to just like I'm about to give it. I'm about to give it. The basics start with something as simple as when we first wake up in the morning, are we appreciative of this life? Have we set a tone 
for our role mm -hmm. within the world, within society, within the frame of time. The eight hours or nine hours that the sun is up until we right. let the next seven or eight hours until the sun comes back up. Are we mentally preparing ourselves for the day? Have we just centered ourselves? Mm -hmm. So number one, for a woman, a black woman, you have to believe in something higher than yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily say that the black man is higher or lower. If you are attacking mm -hmm. with 100% and it's not being reciprocated, you can feel it, they can see it, We, are, it's evident. You got to know yourself on a basic level. Yeah. Um, Where do you think black women like fall short? And it's not to bash black women. Right, right, right.